Hi guys, I hope everyone's been doing well. Someone asked if I would be able to make more Elden Ring videos and I said I'd look into my backlog of projects and see if there was anything that I was like in the middle of working on and it turns out there was like back from April I was supposed to have this video out and um, it just fell by the wayside. I just never did anything with it. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and revisit it and hopefully the topic is still interesting at least to like the nerds out there. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to look at some of the different mythological inspirations for some of the characters in Elden Ring and I'm by no means an authority on mythology of any kind of mythology so don't quote me in a school paper or anything like that. This is just a conversation between uh, friends. So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at my little list I put together. First on my list is Lord Rygard and Lady Tanith as having been inspired by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel from the Bible. Now the similarities between these characters are so striking to me that I put them in bullet points just to kind of show how similar they are. So Rygard is the most evil leader in the lands between and Ahab was called the most wicked king of Israel. Rikard met Tanith when she was a dancer in a foreign land, and Jezebel was a Sidonian princess that Ahab married outside of Israel. Rikard and Tanith worshipped Agle, who was a serpent deity that they offered blood sacrifices to, and Ahab and Jezebel worshipped Baal, which was a pagan deity associated with child sacrifice. Tanith was the one pulling the strings at Volcano Manor, and Jezebel was the one pulling the strings over Ahab and thus over Israel. It's just so apparent to me that there's some kind of inspiration here. I mean, Rikard actually visually looks like King Ahab. As far as Agle goes, the snake deity, there are so many different snake deities in all kinds of different mythologies, but two of them really stood out to me, and that was Krom Kruik who was a pagan snake god of Ireland that was appeased through human sacrifice, and Aphosis, who was an Egyptian snake god of chaos that wanted to devour the sun so that the world would return to darkness, which sounds a lot like the same rhetoric that Rikard says about devouring the gods. Next, we're gonna look at Melania, Blade of Mygla, who has very strong inspirations from Nuda Ergatlam, who is a god in Irish mythology. Nuda was the king of the Tuatha Dúdánann, who were a race of Irish deities and supernatural humans. And Nuda had lost his arm in a battle against a very formidable opponent, and it was later replaced by a silver prosthetic arm. Visually, it's very obvious that Melania has strong influences from Nuda, from the flowing red hair, the metal prosthetic arm, which is like such a specific thing. Even the battle where Nuda loses his arm to the powerful champion Strag. It sounds a lot like Melania's battle with Radon, even down to Melania being carried off the battlefield just like Nuda was. Next is the Erd Tree, and this one is very obviously supposed to be Yggdrasil from Norse mythology, which was the sacred world tree, it was the center, literally the center of everything, of all the nine realms that were held together from its branches to its roots, which reached all the way to the realm of the dead. And likewise, the roots of the Erd Tree, you find them growing all the way down into the catacombs below the ground. Visually, the Erd Tree is just so pretty, and when you think of a sacred world tree like Yggdrasil was this the center of everything in Norse mythology, you think of it would look like the Erd Tree, like glowing and just you can see it from every angle, so I thought it was just so cool how they took something like, yeah, very obviously it's the same tree, but they they visualized it in a way that I hadn't seen before because even in games that do feature Yggdrasil, it just doesn't look as glamorous as the Erd Tree does. Next is Queen Merica, whom I believe has very strong influences from the Norse goddess Freya. So the big reveal with Merica and Elden Ring is that she and Radigan were the same person. That was like the twist. And it's never described how it happens, it just is that way, which makes Elden Ring feel very authentic as far as mythology goes. But Merica and Radigan, the way that they work, the way that they're separate but the same person, sound a lot like how the goddess Freya and the goddess Frigg work. They appear as two different deities in Norse text, 
two completely different figures, but they are identical and they have been concluded to actually come from the same goddess. And it just sounds so much like the same kind of coexistence, separated existence that America and Radigan have. And even more obviously, Freya had a twin brother named Freyr, who was her male counterpart. And on one occasion, Loki even accuses her of having slept with him. So the America is Freya proof just seems pretty strong to me. Last on my list of figures to talk about is Godwin, Godwin the Golden, whom I believe to be Baldur, another Norse god. Baldur was the son of Frigg, aka Freya, who is very beloved by all of the gods. Baldur was said to be so handsome and gracious and so cheerful that he glowed. And after telling his mother that he was having nightmares about his death, Frigg made a pact with every element in the Nine Realms so that nothing would ever harm her son. But there was just one thing she overlooked, which was mistletoe. So Loki finds out Baldur's one weakness and he fashions a weapon out of mistletoe, which ends up killing Baldur, and Baldur from then on is doomed to forever remain in hell. This story sounds so much like what happened to Godwin, America's favorite golden son, killed from a weapon specifically fashioned to murder him, which would make Rani the Loki of the lands between, she absolutely is. After she kills Godwin, he's unable to die and we see this horrible monstrosity that's alive living at the base of the tree and that could absolutely be a reference to Baldur being condemned to be miserable in hell. Baldur's death put Ragnarok into motion. Ragnarok was the ending, the end times, judgment day for the, the Norse gods, the destruction of everything, much like the shattering was that happened after Godwin's death was the beginning of the end for the lands between. And again, if there is a connection to Freya with Merica, that would definitely make Godwin Baldur. All right, and that's it. That concludes my short little list. Like I said, this topic is like the tip of the iceberg. There's so much inspiration, mythology inspiration in Elden Ring, and Elden Ring is itself its own mythology now. I think that's why people really like it. It's its own school of mythos in a game, which is just really, really cool. So yeah, this is just a short list that I put together. But if you want to see more topics like this, let me know what kind of topics you want to see in general. I can now mark this one off my list of having completed it. But I hope you enjoyed watching and let me know in the comments if there are any other connections that you've noticed. I love this stuff so I like reading the comments. I'll definitely engage with you about that. But yeah, otherwise uh, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye!